All right, here we go. So we're, let's do the comparison. So it's just gonna be like a visual comparison. Um, I will do a video on uh, how the um, how this guy does when it's on on the bike and all set up. Uh, I'll take it to Metcalf Motorcycle Park and uh, do a little shakedown with it. But uh, to my left is a stock uh, DR650 uh, rebuilt stock shock. Um, uh, by uh, Cogent Dynamics, and to the right is a uh, aftermarket Cogent Dynamics uh, Mojave Pro shock, totally built from scratch in house. So, uh, um, I think it's about three hundred dollars. Uh, the price differences are, I think, I think. Well, the, this one you use your stock shock, so I don't know how much a stock shock costs, you know, but. Um, I'd imagine if you bought a brand brand new one, probably not so cheap. Um, but if but you can probably find them used for anywhere from like a hundred bucks to like three hundred or four hundred bucks. Um, um, but yeah, so this is the so this is the stock rebuilt shock. Uh, it, it's sprung for like a two hundred. I told them this to uh, to valve it for like a two hundred seventy five pound uh, gear and rider. Um, for the gear and the rider, um, and uh, let's see here. Uh, the differences between a, a stock shock and uh, this shock is uh, it has this uh, it has this nice uh, black kind of finish here. It's supposed to be uh, like a, I guess it's supposed to be a, like a hardened coating or something. It makes it stronger. Uh, also, the um, the shaft has a, a coating on it to make it harder. And um, oh, also this has a 7.5 uh, kgmm uh, spring here. Uh, it's like kind of like the middleweight spring uh, for for aftermarket springs. So for, for those who don't know, um, the stock shock on a DR650 is like notorious for it being uh, too soft, too soft and underdamped, and uh, can't do much aggressive riding. It's okay for the street, but uh, but once you take it off road. Uh, it is uh, it is crap. <laughs> uh, it has a uh, it has a, uh, a dampening here. I think it's uh, just uh, I think it's only compression dampening adjustment right here. Uh, it may be compression and rebound at the same time. I don't know. It doesn't really do anything. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You can adjust it all the way in, all the way out. You wouldn't notice any difference. So here it says like softer and harder. So. Um, so you turn it counterclockwise, it becomes harder, and uh, so it becomes softer, and then you turn it clockwise, uh, it makes it harder. Um, and uh, honestly, I don't notice any difference. Um, so you can see I've uh, also, uh, the preload has been jacked up almost all the way. So um, for, for me and the gear on the bike, uh, the 7.5 kgmm shock uh, spring is, um, is barely, it's just enough, just enough to get by. Um, yeah, so, so there it is, uh, Cogent Dynamics, uh, rebuilt, uh, re rebuilt and revalved, uh, stock shock. That's what this is. Uh, the, one of the good things is, uh, from the factory, you can lower your bike. Uh, there's two different, uh, holes here on the clevis. And then to my right here is the Cogent Mojave Pro. Uh, some, I'll tell you some, uh, immediate features of it. Uh, so... I can I can already tell you um, this is heavier. <laughs> it's a lot heavier than stock shock. I will actually weigh them when we do the comparison. Um, so this is a Cogent Mojave Pro. It's been uh, it's been a uh, custom built for uh, my uh, my type of riding and uh, and uh, my weight. Uh, I'm about like 275 with the gear and my person on it. Um, uh, it features a uh, adjustable compression uh, dampening here uh, much like the stock shock pretty much in the same place it has a it has a reservoir just like a uh, the the regular Mojave does not have this reservoir uh, and it has like a like a high high-tech uh, piston head and everything that you know it so it sheds heat better um, I can tell you this on this one um, if I ride it if I'm riding it for a while like maybe like an hour or so and off-road You'll notice the dampening; is, it starts getting squishier and squishier. Um, yeah, you'll notice its performance 
dropping. <laughs> uh, so it also features a uh, adjustable uh, uh, rebound on the on the sh shock shaft here. This one also has a uh, diamond uh, diamond coated. Uh, I don't remember, I don't totally remember what they call it, but it's it's like a diamond coated uh, shock shaft, and it's a uh, very uh, and it's supposed to be like a lot harder and uh, it's a uh, it lasts longer than the than the than the stock. Uh, this one is like a it, this one has been coated to make it harder also, but I, I, it's not a it's not black like this one. But it, this looks so cool, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, everything is like a CNC aluminum on this. Uh, also, this has a Olin's uh, comes with the Olin's 8.5 uh, kgmm shock, so it's a it's a little bit. It's a little bit stiffer than this one, um, so like I like I said, uh, I I reached a, pretty much reached the limit of this, so I I should be pretty good with this one. Uh, this should be enough for for what I need it for. Um, yeah, so uh, so that's pretty much it. That's a uh, this is the Cogent Mojave Pro. Uh, it pretty much goes on the stock the way uh, the stock shock does. So um, so let's do the comparison. All right. Since I mentioned the weight earlier, let's start with that. So we will start with the uh, cogent di uh, the the stock uh, rebuilt shock. It comes in at eight pounds, eight pounds fourteen ounces. In there, cogent Mojave Pro. nine pounds four ounces so what was it the other one was eight so eh the difference in weight is like a pound so I can feel this one is noticeably heavier though let's try it again yeah we got like a eight it's not a not a big difference actually I don't know it just it just feels when I pick this one up it feels beefier oh. it's really only it's really only about a pound difference though so it's I would say negligible <laughs> for the performance you got and they they assured me that this uh, this performs much better than than this one right here because they can only do so much with this um, alright further comparisons so uh, oh, oh yeah also this has uh, this shock has been lowered uh, they've uh, they've lowered it a uh, uh, three quarters of, a, of an inch from uh, from the way it is. Um, normally, the um, uh, the Mojave Pro is longer than stock, so it would increase your ride height. But I said like, oh, I don't really want to increase the ride height any more than you know what it is. Um, so I try. I I think three quarter inches was the most they can lower it. Um, it has something to do. They can like adjust something inside of it that uh, that limits the amount of uh, travel or something. Um, but uh, I'm hoping I'm not going to bottom out with this because the dampening is so much better. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, so I will get a little less travel. Is the is the difference between this and like the regular Mojave Pro? Actually, I forgot to mention that, so I should. Um, also, okay, so. The differences. Let's look at the spring. If you, if I was to line up the springs, the Olin spring, fancy pants Olin spring, that is pretty close to lined up. You can tell that the Olin spring is much longer. It is about an extra, pretty much an full coil, maybe more, longer than this 7.5. I think this is a Pro Cycle spring. I'm not sure. I bought it on eBay a long time ago. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one of the differences, uh, and then, and then, uh, this, let me put this, let me put the shocks back to back. Okay, so I've got a screwdriver, and I've kind of tried to, I try to line it up as good as I can, the, the top eyelets, so they're pretty much at the same, uh, height right now. Um, so, as you can see, uh, because uh, I had this custom lowered um, from myself, the the clevis that where the where the bolt goes through the um, the clevis here, 
is actually a uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but well, just from looking at it, it's in between the the lower bolt hole and the upper bolt hole. So that's actually, you know, I think that's a good compromise for me. I, I don't like the bike too tall. I like to be able to put my feet on the ground. I know it's like a it, that's a noob thing, you know, but <laughs> um, I I I don't like it too tall uh, because you know it's an adventure bike. I'm not riding the bike competitively or anything. You know, it's I'm just out there exploring. Uh, I like to get on and off the bike all the time and and like uh you know maybe not ride so fast through some sections. So uh yeah, that's the difference. Uh, I can tell you now. This is about the middle here. Yeah, actually, let me get something. All right, I got a piece of wood here and uh I can put this I've lined it up with the center of the bolt hole. See there? Out of about there. And as you can see, indeed, it is it does line up just just uh, below the upper bolt hole. So that's pretty cool. Um, I would have liked it if they had something like this for the um, for this one, so you can adjust it. But uh, hey, it's a custom shock. I had um, I had a I had it built to my specifications. So way to go! <laughs> All right. So another uh, difference between the uh, the Mojave Pro and the and the Stock Shock are uh, the bushings. The upper bushings are solid on the Mojave Pro, so you get a lot, you get a lot less, uh, you know, kind of. It's a lot less twisting and bending. It's more, uh, you know, the the way the shock moves is it doesn't it won't, there won't be any give or anything, so it's stiffer. Uh, whereas the stock one is like kind of like has a they pushed in a kind of bushing. With a rubber uh, kind of rubber dampening material in the middle, so it's it's gonna give a little bit. Um, and then you can see the clevis design is different. Uh, we were looking at that earlier. Uh, this one is a lot smaller. It's smaller, but it uh, looks it looks actually about as thick as this one. So it's just it's just smaller. And uh, and obviously this one has a uh, the rebound adjuster right here. This does not, and this doesn't have this big fatty uh, collar here. Um, this collar actually limits your travel if you flip it, flip it over and stuff. That's the way they designed it. Uh, right now, it's uh, it's set for the most travel, I think. So that doesn't have that. This it just has this kind of like a what is this? A perch? It just has this little bottom perch here. This aluminum perch. Um, also, uh, so the stock. Uh, the stock, uh, well, since we're comparing the the cogent, both cogent shocks, uh, I guess I guess you know the 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 bump stops are the same. They're these small little rubber bump stops, so it gives you the most travel. Um, but the stock one is about like that thick, but it's like it kind of it's kind of like pyramid shaped and it like it's designed to compress, you know. Uh, also the shock shafts, you can tell the difference in the shock shafts. Um, this one is a very shiny chrome, chrome uh, shock shaft. This one is a not so shiny. <laughs> it's a black shock shaft. It's cool. It's a, it, that's a diamond plating. Uh, also uh, shock bodies. Shock bodies... Uh, about the same. They're roughly about the same. If anything, they are the same. <laughs> Shock body same. It actually the cogent looks like if you kind of line up the top parts. I don't know. I don't know, like the volume of the shock or anything. They, they look, the volume looks very similar, but um, actually the cogent looks just a little bit like a hair taller. Um, it actually looks a little thinner too. Let me go get a caliper out. All right. Got the caliper out, so I just measured the rebuilt stock shock. Comes in at 14 millimeters. I'm gonna go measure this one. Well, I can't get it in there uh, straight because <laughs> the the coils are so close to each other. It's it's about the same. Yeah, it's about the same. 14 millimeter. The reservoir. Um, is this nice CNC aluminum here? Let me uh, this out. Actually, let's uh, measure the shock bodies uh, 
from where the where the threads are, I guess. So right there we have a, a almost 50 foot 50 millimeter, and this one is actually looks thinner. Yeah, it's about 46 millimeter, so it's actually thinner than uh, this one. So, I mean, physically and dimensions, eh, they're almost the same. This one is thinner, the shock body. Okay, another difference is uh, the different the tools you use to adjust the um, the preload adjustment collars. Uh, the stock uh, um, Suzuki shock uses this number, you know. Well, this is very common among motorcycles. Stick it in there and then you turn it the way you want. Um, the uh, Mojave Pro uses a little bar dealy and you just stick it in the hole here and then you adjust it. Um, I would think this is probably easier to use. I don't know, I'll find out when I get it on the bike. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this will allow me to adjust the Hopefully this will allow me to adjust it while it's on the bike uh, with the airbox in place, but we'll find out when I install it. So those are the two different tools, uh, two different collars. So this one has like the two collars that you're supposed to kind of sandwich, smash together, and then this one only has the one. Uh, this has a set screw here. I mean, it has a place you can put a set screw, but I didn't. It didn't come with a set screw. At least I don't. I don't think it did. I probably looked the box a little more. Um, I wouldn't want to. I don't know if I don't know if we would want to put a set screw in there anyways because it would damage the threads, wouldn't it? Also, I think this has a bearing here. There's a little bearing here on the top. Uh, I don't know what the type of bearing it was. It's a thrust bearing or something. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can see it's it's um, it's got some grease here. So so the bearing is there. So like uh, it when the when the spring compresses it, the the um, Spring could move more easily, you know, and it'll be easier to move this collar. Is uh, is the benefits from that? Um, this does not have it, but you can buy it from. You can buy it and add it on this um, from Cogent. So let's take a look at the adjusters for the compression. Uh, this one has uh, I don't know how many clicks it is, but uh, it has little um, little dimples in it. So let's kind of tell where it's at. Uh, there's no little air. I don't know. I don't really see a little uh, pointer on that. Um, whereas this one has nothing, and uh, but it has. I think it has a dimple right here. There's a dimple on. The, yeah. So the other one kind of doesn't have a dimple, but it's a little bit different shaped on one side. So. So if you can go off of that, really you should just go off of like count how many clicks from, from full clockwise or, or counterclockwise. I'm not really sure how many clicks there are and plus this one doesn't have a, uh, a rebound adjuster. So uh, This one has a uh, uh, the, the fill port for the nitrogen down here. Um, so there's that, but this one does not have it. On the reservoir. Not really sure where it is. I don't know how you fill this thing up with gas. Maybe you don't. You have to do it very carefully. But uh, yeah, I would not be able to do that. This one just has the Schrader valve. This one, I don't know how to do it. So it doesn't have a Schrader valve for adding uh, air and, or nitrogen into the shock. Uh, also, uh, I had heard uh, they told me the design of this is like um, because of the design here. Um, the the nitrogen leaks into the oil and it contaminates it and and then like your dampening is suck you know I'm not really sure how that I'm not really a, a an expert in fluid dynamics <laughs> so ho supposedly this one this this has better uh, heat shedding abilities but I will find that out uh, for this myself. This is a very nice cogent dynamics uh, kind of decal on here. I like it a lot definitely tell it's custom this one does uh, does not have anything on the reservoir it does have a little cogent sticker on the other side here I, I'm pretty sure you will not be able to see that on the bike um, yeah the only way you can tell it's an aftermarket shock is if you looked at the you probably looked at the clevis um, 
or you know, hey, the reservoir is different than stock, and the, the ring adjuster. But uh, I tell you this, uh, I hope uh, I hope this uh, blows my uh, blows my oh, yeah. mind. So I was talking about <laughs> cool stickers. Uh, there's one. I forgot. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't notice there was one on top of the reservoir, right there. So that's pretty much the same one that they have on, on the side here. I still kind of like this. This one looks really nice. All right. Maybe something like that. Because uh, I spent a lot of money on this. So. Oh well, yeah, I didn't. I didn't do the price comparison. I, I was. Get, I went to it, but I, I kind of went off track. Uh, this uh, this costs about I think three hundred dollars. Uh, I'll put a subtitle below uh, what it is, but uh, I think this this will run you about three hundred bucks um, to get to send your shock to Cogent Dynamics and have them uh, revalve it and do their magic on it. And um, yeah, uh, this cost me with all the bells and whistles already on it um, and custom built for myself. Costs about eleven hundred dollars, so uh, a huge price. Well, not huge. It's double. It's double the price. Double the price, but of course, this one you're you're already you're sending your your shock in, and and you know they told me that they can only do so much with this. This is a piece of junk here, <laughs> and I I concur. I you know time and time again, DR650 suspension has uh, left me uh, wanting more out of it, <laughs> and uh, we'll see, we'll see how this guy does. I don't know why Suzuki can't just put good suspension on a DR650. I, I would be willing to pay a, a thousand, maybe an extra thousand more for a brand new bike with good suspension, you know? So that is that. Um, also there, uh, on my, my unboxing video, there there's a uh, serial number right here. It's kind of hard to see because it's kind of dark, but every shock has a serial number over here. And that is pretty much it. Uh, oh, I can see there's some uh, some of the paint is is missing from here. I wonder why. I wonder why. Doesn't seem to have hit the. Oh, it does seem to have hit this. Hmm. I hope it's not damaged. It's not leaking or anything. So, well. Anyway, this is a bunch of like stuff. I don't know why stuff hits the spring on this bike. Maybe it's user installation error. I don't know. So there you go. That's uh, those are the those are the kind of like uh, differences at a glance of the uh, Cogent Dynamics rebuilt stock shock, rebuilt reval stock shock, and the Cogent Dynamics uh, Mojave Pro. Um, I'm hoping uh, this will be the last suspension modification I have to do on this bike. Uh, yeah. So. Got to install this one and set the preload, and then uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these clickers. I think they probably already adjusted them for me, um, but it, it didn't say anything. So in, in the thing, so I will just uh, I will count the clicks and record them, and then uh, and just ride it, you know. And if I think it needs to be stiffer, I I will increase it. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm one of those guys like set it and forget it, you know. Uh, I don't really like messing around with this stuff unless unless it will make a noticeable difference, you know. Uh, anytime I mess with this, it didn't really, I didn't really notice any difference. So. Too soft, too soft. All right, I think uh, this is a Showa. This is a Showa shock. I think Showa makes this shock, and this is a completely Cogent Dynamics uh, in-house product here. Very nice. And uh, yes, I uh, called it Excalibur because it looks like it's fit for a king. And my name is Merlin, so. <laughs> Alright. Hades and I got.